so welcome everybody. I've been so looking forward to this magical recording uh, all about Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. And so I'm delighted uh, to introduce uh, Sophie Havard-Williams. She's the Head of Business uh, Development for London and guess what, Hollywood from Warner Brothers Studio Tours. And also we have John Bridge, who is the Travel Trade Representative for Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. So welcome both of you. It's really exciting to have you on the Online Travel Talks. Thank you, Thank you for having us. <laughs> right, so anybody who doesn't even know what we're talking about, Harry Potter, who is that? Apparently Harry Potter has been going, would you believe, for 25 years. So John, tell me, Who's Harry Potter, just in case you didn't know? So yeah, just in case you have been hiding for the last 25 years, Harry Potter um, is the boy wizard who lived. Uh, it, of course, uh, was first and foremost a book written by J.K. Rowling those 25 years ago, um, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, unless you're in the States, and then it's Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Um, and through, eight, uh, through seven years um, at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, um, Harry battles various different um, challenges, whether that be um, internally and grappling with his past or um, the present and, and facing off against Lord Voldemort um, and the, the Death Eaters or the, the, dark, um, the dark arts or the dark side of um, the wizarding world. Um, and with his two friends, Ron and Hermione, he, um, yeah, very much triumphs um, and I, I think really it's a story of, of yes, overcoming adversity and um, really being at one with your, learning to be at one with yourself. And I think it, it's got a wonderful message um, in that way. And of course, originally a book um, and then uh, eight movies, all of which were filmed at uh, Leavesden Studios in, in, in Watford, um, which is where the, the studio tour is now situated. Um, and I, again, the, 10 years in 2022 this judo tour has been open so I, with that i yeah we'll we'll pass over to the, our next yeah uh, gosh so 10 years the studio's been been going and sophie my goodness i mean i feel like i've been in a time warp <laughs> harry potter seems like yesterday and and so does the tour so yeah tell me more about that um and absolutely you're so right where have those 10 years gone i've been very lucky to be part of it from the beginning so to see it grow has been a, a wow. well Experience. Um, but yeah, so the Warner Brothers Studio London, it, you know, it, it was the home, like you said, John, of, of all the films were made. And when they finished, they just did not want to get rid of these beautifully handmade sets. So we decided to house them and now give people the chance to actually walk around and see behind the scenes and see what the camera doesn't show you, which is just such a unique opportunity. Um, and it is a self-guided tour through like I said all the iconic sets from the films and um, you get to see all the props and the costumes you get to go up close you get to read learn see mm. the little details which really is what makes it magical when you see how much attention to detail goes in that's the one bit of feedback that a lot of people say um, and we have different features throughout the year where we're really focused so for example at Christmas we'll focus in the in the um, in the great hall and we'll dress it like the Yule Ball and it'll really come to life so um, wow. even if you're a fan or not you know just if you have interest, interest in film and just mm. see it goes into production and behind the scenes hair makeup every aspect is featured we average about three and a half hours dwell time for the tour itself and it is pre-book um it's time slotted we've always been time slotted and that works beautifully for us because you know you don't feel too busy at any time at any one time you know you you walk around with your family at your own pace lots of areas to um have food and drink uh, we have our wi-fi we have our cloakrooms lots of photo opportunity of course you have to write ride a broomstick otherwise <laughs> Uh, be a real uh, tribute to Harry Potter and a chance to have a butter beer in the back lot. So over the years of being opened, we've made many additions and expansions and um, it's bigger and better than ever before. So yeah, I hope that we can uh, welcome. Sounds wonderful, like really experiential. And as you say, you're sort of going through everything, the book, the film, and now you can actually see how the film was made. You can experience it. You can ride a broomstick and drink the drink. I mean, yeah, that really is living and feeling and breathing Harry Potter. And, and you're right also, John, that, you know, it's like good versus evil, uh, conquering, growing up. You know, you've, you've kind of grown up with um, 
uh, the Harry Potter actors as well, haven't we, through the through the different films. Um, so, uh, yeah, and it's so fabulous that uh, you're coming on to OTT and creating a course, aren't you? So, but before we talk about that, um, let's talk about The Cursed Child, which is going into production very, very soon, isn't it? Yes, so we started rehearsals yesterday. Um, and I guess for, for anybody that's listening, it's some other time yesterday, in, in our little world was the, the 1st of September, um, when traditionally Harry Potter and all of his school friends would go back to Hogwarts. Um, so we thought that that was a symbolic day um, to recommence our rehearsals for the cast child. So our cast gathered together and had some school photos yesterday for the first time um, <laughs> since, since the pandemic. Um, and yes, we will reopen um, at the Palace Theatre in London on the 14th of October. Um, and for travel and tourism partners, we are on sale until the 23rd of October 2022. So there are plenty right. of um, time to get tickets. Um, but the, the, the play really picks up on everything you just said about immersing our um, guests or immersing the customer into the wizarding world. The second that you step into the Palace Theatre, you are immersed in the world of, of, of Harry Potter again. Um, and I'm going to use our hashtag and use our tagline of keep the secrets. But um, there are certain things that you should look out for in all of the hallways before you get into um, the auditorium itself, um, which really starts to bring the magic to life um, even before you've sat in your seat. Um, but the show really picks up at the end of the last book or the end of the last film. Um, again, for those who don't know, it, it ends with um, basically our three heroes, Harry, Ron and um, Hermione, and of course, Harry's wife, Ginny, um, as grown-ups, as adults, um, 18 years later at um, platform nine and three quarters. Um, and that's where the, our story picks up. Um, and it picks up on Harry's son, Albus, um, Draco's son, um, Scorpius, and they um, go on their own adventures at Hogwarts. Um, and again, I'm not going to say too much, um, but what we wanted to do is make the show as epic and as huge um, and as large scale as all of the films were. And we wondered, how can we do that? Um, so instead of just doing one, one play in one part, we are doing a play in two parts. Um, so you have to, you, you, you dedicate a day um, to Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. It starts at two o'clock. Um, and you finish by half past nine. Of course, we give you time for dinner in between. Uh, wow, yeah. so that's more than just a play then. That really is, that's that's another experience, isn't it? Oh, yes. A play, uh, yeah, it's a dinner show or, yeah. It's, um, yeah. it's a, uh, the, the producers of the, of the play, um, uh, Colin Callender and Sonia Friedman uh, were basically tasked by J.K. Rowling and the whole creative team, John Tiffany, um, on how do we how do we really make this as epic as the films? How do we really um, give the fans what they deserve, what they need, what they're really craving? And uh, when it, the, the script was written, and it's the the most purchased script in history um, for a play, we um, just just decided it needs to be in two parts. That the fans need the whole story, um, and the story itself is is if you pick out something very key to the third book, to the Prisoner of Azkaban. Uh, Vision of Azkaban or the film, third film. Yeah. Um, there is something in that that's, that's very key to the whole story. And we take that through uh, into the um, into the play. It's a story that's never really been told, but if you read any Harry Potter fan fiction or if you read anything um, throughout the net, there's a lot of questions going on about that, that piece of that little instrument um, mm -hmm. and the stories that it could tell and has not told. Um, and using that, uh, Harry's son Albus and Scorpius get into a lot of trouble, shall we say, um, over the course of the play. So um, now I know parts of Harry Potter can be quite scary. So is there like a, an age limit for a child? You know, sort of a, obviously a family going. Um, yeah. We, is it, even is it scary for adults? That <laughs> I'm scared of everything. So, <laughs> um, you can tell I, I'm a bit like, oh. <laughs> I, I would say... Um, the way that we've brought the Wizarding World to life on stage, it mixes as a really modern stagecraft with Victorian trickery. And it's kind of trickery that's been around as it is for hundreds of years. And I think that's what it makes it somewhat family friendly. I would say anybody over the age of eight, um, okay. provided that you are, you don't have to be a fan of Harry Potter, of course, but I think for that younger audience, if the mm. kids are already immersed in the world of Harry Potter and they love it and they they want to come to the studio tour and they want to see um, uh, Harry Potter on location and they want to see all of the the, the, the photo exhibition as well, that they're going to love the play. I would say yeah. 
mums and dads, I think, can pick up on the story without necessarily seeing the films or reading the books. Mm. It does stand alone, um, and it stands alone very, very well. Mm. Um, but I'd say for, for kids, I'd say A+, plus, 10+, plus, um, but they... I would say they they need to love the wizarding world too. Yeah, I think kids of that age any are really into make believe, aren't they? And sort of they really kind of go on the go on a roll, don't they, with with things that are um are sort of presented to them. So I'm sure they will get straight into that world quicker than probably any adult. So okay, God, that's such fun. I had no idea it was as long as as you've just described. Fabulous. Um, do you know how much that costs? Um, so we have numerous different price bands um mm -hmm. ranging uh, i think the uh how do i phrase it properly I, the, yeah. the prices start at um 15 pounds um i would say for a travel agent or a tour operator that's listening we give you access to our band a and our band b seats which take up most of the stalls and most of the um ah this is the bit that's going to need editing i think it's the royal circle the grand circle most of the stalls in the grand circle um, yeah. And uh, those prices really, uh, we have prices for Wednesday and Friday performances and then prices for Saturday and Sunday performances. Mm -hmm. um, we don't run like a normal show. Uh, we don't, I say normal, we don't offer Monday, Tuesdays or Thursdays. Um, and for travel agents, you have to book both parts at the same time. Um, so you have to book both Wednesday parts, both Friday parts, both Saturday parts or both Sunday parts. Um, I would say um, if you're looking for great availability, um, I think I'm speaking for the show as well as uh, the Warner Brothers um, attractions is if you pick our Wednesday performances, you are most likely to get the best availability, the best seats, um, especially if you're booking closer to your date of departure. Um, the further out you book, um, the better experience, well, not the better experience, everybody has a great seat, but you get to pick the seats that you Want that you want yes and so this sort of leads us on to all of this information i gather is going to be in the ott course yes for the first yeah. time ever we're letting agents see the behind the scenes of the behind the scenes um, wow. so all of these tips <laughs> tricks hints um coming at you through the ott course brilliant oh it's so exciting to see that one come live so um what made you decide to do that to put an ott course together all about um harry potter and the cursed child so we um, we so we know that agents are having a particularly uh, tough time at the moment, um, and we know that I think for the for, for the foreseeable future there's going to be a huge domestic market focus, and of course a lot of agents across the UK are so used to selling other Harry Potter experiences, whether that be in uh, Orlando or in Florida or mm -hmm. in uh, other Universal parks, um, but not necessarily our our London Harry Potter world. Um, and there is so much here in London that you can experience beyond what we're talking about today. Um, there's the platform nine and three quarters store at um, King's Cross St Pancras Station. There are numerous other experiences if you go to Gatwick or Heathrow Airport. Um, so there's there's so much here for an agent to learn about, and we we really wanted to give the agent the support and the information that they that they need that and they need. require to sell sell it all really. Um, Absolutely. And you can understand how to book it as well, which is the key thing on yeah. the course. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, um, I think everybody knows London. Everybody knows um, the Tower of London, for instance, or those kind of the London Eye. What we want to do is go go and show you how easy it is to create a Harry Potter itinerary. And again, uh, there is always a rumor or there is always a, um, I'm trying to think of the words, but there is always a, uh, an air about Harry Potter products that oh they're sold out why should I even try and get tickets for them and what we want to uh, what we want to do with this course is say no we are here to work with you we we are reaching out we of course are very very popular we're never going to say that there aren't days that we don't sell out hmm. but um, we are we are here and we are here to listen as well as show you how how to get tickets in the best and easiest ways um, for you. Yes, whilst allocating um, seats to the trade at the same time, isn't it? So, so they've got um, easy access, which which is really good. And spaces, yeah, you're, well. um, yeah. The, the, the um, studio tour, of course, has time slots, and I think the yeah. uh, Harry Potter on location also has time slots as well. Brilliant. Yes, we didn't talk too much about Harry Potter on location. Do you want to explain a bit more about that, Sophie? 
Yeah, I would love to. Um, our latest edition, actually. So something we were busy on working um, when the world seemed to close. We were <laughs> opening a, a new attraction in London, which opened up just a matter of weeks ago. Um, based in Covent Garden. So whereas the studios is based just north of London, a little bit outside, a very short uh, trip outside. We are now um, in central London, Covent Garden, and we've opened up um, the Harry Potter photographic exhibition. And, and what that allows us to now showcase is some of the iconic production photography um, from all of the filming that we took and, 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 and carried out throughout the UK and, um, and in Scotland. So you have a journey through the, the, the flow of the story of the book and it takes you through all the iconic sets from Leadenhall Market that you get to see, to King's Cross, of course, where Harry takes on his first journey. Um, and, and it's a, just a, a, a wonderful experience, central London. You'll also get to experience our first ever bottled butter beer bar. <laughs> <laughs> to be we've already seen how incredibly popular that is um and um and the video will show a little bit about how wonderful the the area that you get to enjoy that wonderful drink uh, looks like and it's um been designed in a wonderful a wonderful way we also have obviously the broomsticks and a few of unique photo opportunities that you don't get at the tour actually so um if you are a harry potter fan uh this again is a it's a wonderful addition actually to the tour so what we will say to people is it wouldn't be either or because they're so unique in their own way and you'll get something very different from both mm. but mentioning just then about availability you know obviously there are certain times of the year when we do experience a surge and um you know if you weren't able to get a ticket at the studio tour this would also allow you to get that harry potter fix yeah do something uh, in the official Harry Potter world whilst you're in London. But yes, you have got time to do both. So we average on uh, about an hour, an hour and a half of the photographic exhibition. Um, and uh, and yeah, we hope to, I hope we see you guys there. For sure. Wow. So there's so much to think about and to book. And it's great you've got allocations for the trade as well. And you're embracing the trade, really informing them, which is what everybody needs in order to um, have confidence in, in uh, selling. So um, uh, it just remains for me to thank you so much for joining Online Travel Talks today. Uh, I think we have to see a little bit of a glimpse of the cursed child and what that's going to be like. So we're going to play that out in a, in a moment. Um, but uh, for now, um, Sophie and um, John, Thank you very much and uh, wishing you all every success with, with the show as it goes live in October. What date is it again? Uh, the show goes uh, uh, opens yeah. on the 14th of October. Um, and again, the, October. The, the studio tour and Harry Potter on location are both already open and open. Open already. Absolutely great to clarify. Thank you so much and bye-bye. Thank <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs>